Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for gathering with us on this wonderful Sunday morning. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I want to encourage you to get your Bible, get your pen, get your piece of paper to write on this morning. Uh, we're going to get into being filled with the Spirit of God, and there's lots of good things we need to know about that. And as we get ready to get into the Word this morning, let's pray. Father, we thank you and praise you for the privilege and opportunity we have to get into your Word today. We thank you, Father, for the power of your Word being released in our life. Thank you for learning. Thank you for growing. Thank you for gaining knowledge and wisdom and understanding. Thank you, Father, for not just learning the principles of your Word, but applying them to our life so we can experience transformation and change and father we can get in position to be used by you and father we thank you and praise you for the holy spirit holy spirit think through my mind speak through my mouth and we give you all the praise and glory and honor for everything that will be accomplished this morning in the wonderful name of the lord jesus christ amen praise the lord well we're excited to share the word of god with you this morning and i want us to go to ephesians chapter 5 ephesians chapter 5 and ephesians chapter 5 in, in verse 18, it says, Ephesians 5, verse 18, it says, And do not be drunk with wine in which is the excess or dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. I want to focus in on those words. The Bible tells us, God tells us, be filled with the Spirit. And you know what's interesting is when you study the uh, grammar of this particular passage, uh, it's actually in the imperative sense, which means that it's a command. So this isn't a suggestion. This isn't a good idea. It is a command. God has given us a command as believers to be filled with the Spirit. And so we're in the middle of a series called Be Filled, Be Filled. And we're talking about being filled with the Holy Spirit and speaking in other tongues. We're looking at what does the Bible say about being filled with the Spirit? We're looking at what the Bible says about speaking in other tongues. Is it scriptural? Is it biblical? Is it for just a few? Is it for the whole body of Christ? <clears throat> what will, <clears throat> what will <clears throat> being filled with the Spirit and having the ability to speak in other tongues do for us? And so we're answering some of those questions inside the verses, uh, inside the Bible and looking at the verses in the Bible. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. If you, uh, <clears throat> if this is your first uh, time joining us, I want to encourage you to go back to our YouTube page because uh, we have started this series, Be Filled. We have several other lessons that have kind of laid the groundwork and the foundation for where we're at today. And so I encourage you to go back. We deal with some misconceptions. We deal with five different cases in the book of Acts where people were filled with the Spirit. Uh, we cover a lot of those different types of things. And so today we want to talk about being filled with the Spirit and go a little further and it's clear that God wants every believer filled with the Spirit. Sometimes people say, well, what's the will of God? I can tell you what the will of God is. The will of God is for every unbeliever to receive Christ, and the will of God is for every believer to be filled with the Spirit and speak in other tongues. How can I be so adamant about that? Because the Bible's adamant about that. We just read, be filled with the Spirit. We, we also read in the word of God that God is not willing that any should perish, but all should come to everlasting life. What does that mean? God's will for every unbeliever is to receive Christ, and God's will for every believer is to be filled with the Spirit and speak in other tongues. And we see that in Acts chapter 2, the believers were filled. There was 120 believers gathered together in the upper room. Uh, we know the 12 disciples there. Judas was not there, obviously. So there was 11 disciples. And there was a, we know there was 120 people in there because the Bible says so. So that means that there was 109 other disciples or followers of Christ in the room with the 11 gathered together. And the Bible says the Holy Spirit was poured out on the day of Pentecost. And Acts 2, 4 says they were all filled with the Spirit. Notice they were all filled, not a few. They were all filled with the Spirit. And they all began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And so uh, we can see that God's will is for every believer to be filled with the Spirit <clears throat> and to speak in, speak in other tongues. Now, <clears throat> one of the questions that comes to mind is, what are the benefits of speaking in tongues? And actually, you know, when I grew up in the church, uh, I didn't know anything about speaking in tongues. I didn't even know what speaking in tongues was, right? Well, <clears throat> then later on, through through being introduced to, to what the Bible says about being filled with the Spirit and speaking other tongues, I saw that it's in the Word of God. And sometimes, you know, just because we haven't heard of something doesn't mean it's not real. 
Uh, just because we're, we just because we're ignorant of something didn't mean it's not a reality. Um, and so my ignorance kept me from experiencing what God had promised. And it wasn't until I heard somebody share the truths of God's word. Hey, God wants us filled with the spirit, be filled with the spirit. Uh, the Bible talks about forbid not to speak with tongues. Paul said, I speak in tongues more than them all. Right. And so there's a lot in the Bible about speaking in other tongues. So we can't let misinformation or a lack of information keep us from experiencing what God wants us to experience. Amen. And so that's why I'm so excited and we're so excited about sharing these uh, this whole series with you because we want to equip you. We want to educate you to not only know what's been provided for you through the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, but we want you to experience it, to be able to communicate it with others. Amen. Now, <clears throat> I can tell you that <clears throat> outside of salvation, my wife's testimony, Pastor Samantha and mine, outside of our salvation experience, the thing that transformed our life the most was being filled with the Spirit of God and speaking in other tongues, having that ability. And uh, <clears throat> I can tell you that when we were filled with the Spirit, we began speaking in other tongues and it radically transformed our lives, right? And so it's, it's an experience that, like I said, is the will of God for every believer, right? And, and in this series, we're covering that. We're showing why that's so important. And we've, we've said that God wants every believer filled with the Spirit and speaking with other tongues. But here's the question I want to answer this morning is, what, what good is speaking in tongues? What will speaking in tongues do for you? You know, fortunately, we're not left to somebody's opinion or speculation, but we can see what the Word of God says about being filled with the Spirit. You know, God's Word should be our guide in every area of life. Sometimes people have their opinions. Sometimes people have ideas, right? And information can come from many different sources. Matter of fact, I was just reading devotionally this week in the book of Matthew, <clears throat> and revelation or information can come from different sources. <clears throat> For instance, um, <clears throat> Jesus asked the disciples, he said, whom do men say that I am? And they notice what he said, whom do men say that I am? And, some, and then the, he goes on to say, they said, well, some say you're John the Baptist, some say you're Elijah, one of the prophets come back from the dead, right? And then he said, but who do you say that I am? Then Peter says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And then Jesus said to him, flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my father. So you got information that comes from men. You got divine inspiration that comes from God. And just a little while later, Jesus said, hey, guys, I'm going to be betrayed. I'm going to be crucified. I'm going to die. And the Bible says Peter grabbed Jesus, pulled him aside and began to rebuke him and said, not so, Lord, this is not going to happen to you. And Jesus looked at Peter and he said, get thee behind me, Satan, for you don't value the things of God. You value the things of men. So he wasn't calling Peter Satan, but he was saying that he was responding. He was receiving information from the enemy. So when you look at these passages that are compressed together in just a short period of time, we can see information can come from speculation from men. It can come from the devil himself and demonic inspiration. And then it can come from the spirit of God. Well, thank God. The Word of God is inspired by God. The Word of God is inspired by God. So we're going to dive into His Word today and see what it says about being filled with the Spirit and speaking in other tongues. So the first one I want us to look at this morning is in 1 Corinthians. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians chapter 14. <clears throat> and I encourage you to write these verses down this morning because, you know, not only do we need to know them, but God can bring people along our path that need the information that we're going to share with you today. Like I said, <clears throat> the most trans transformational event that occurred in my wife's li life and my life, other than salvation, is being filled with the Spirit. And if, so if I'm equipped with what being filled with the Spirit will do for you, then I can help people along the way. I can talk to them about how being filled with the Spirit has transformed my life. I can share what the Bible says about being filled and speaking in other tongues. We can communicate intelligently with other people who may be ignorant of what God says. Amen. So that's one of the benefits. We're going to talk about these benefits. So 1 Corinthians 14, verse 2, we have the first benefit. And the Bible says, for he who speaks in a tongue, he who speaks in a tongue. Does the Bible talk about speaking in tongues? Here it is. 
For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. You're not speaking. When you speak in tongues, you're not speaking to men. You're speaking to God, right? And for no one understands him, how be it in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. So let me read it to you again. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him, how be it in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. So the first benefit to speaking in other tongues is that speaking in other tongues is a way of direct communication with your heavenly father. You're speaking to God when you speak in other tongues. It's a way of direct communication with your heavenly father. Now, <clears throat> this helped me out a lot knowing this verse, <clears throat> because when I was first filled with the spirit of God, <clears throat> they warned us, hey, when you, <clears throat> we were in a meeting when my wife and I got filled with the spirit and spoke in other tongues. And they said, hey, this is a, a devotional gift primarily. And you can, you can pray in tongues, speak in tongues in your devotional life. So when we went back home from this meeting, I said, you know, I'm going to go pray in tongues, right? I'm going to pray in English. I'm going to pray in tongues. Well, uh, they told us, hey, the enemy's going to come to you and try to try to mess with you and say, you know, things like, who are you talking to? What are you saying? Right. And I'm so glad that they told me that information. Uh, and I, I'm thankful that I found this verse because it says he who speaks in an unknown tongue doesn't speak to me and he speaks to God. Right. And so when I started praying in tongues in my devotional life and started praying in the spirit, the enemy came right there. Who are you talking to? <laughs> what are you saying? Right. Well, we read in this verse, I'm talking to God and I'm speaking mysteries to my heavenly father. Right. Uh, I'm speaking to him. Right. I like the message translation. It says this, uh, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 2. It says, if you praise him in a private language of tongues, if you praise him in the private language of tongues, God understands you, but no one else does. For you are sharing intimacies just between you and him. Isn't that awesome? When I speak in tongues, I am sharing intimacies between me and my heavenly father. So that's one of the greatest benefits right there. For no other thing, we're going to cover a lot more but just knowing, hey, speaking in tongues is a way that I can communicate with God. It's a way that I can fellowship with God. It's a way that I can speak mysteries and intimacies between me and my heavenly father, right? Now, <clears throat> notice what it says when you, he said he that speaks in the unknown tongue doesn't speak to men, but he speaks to God. Well, <clears throat> I remember Brother Hagin. <clears throat> um, I went to Rainbow Bible College and, you know, obviously the founder, Brother Hagen. I remember him sh sharing along this line and he was talking about his father-in-law was named Mr. Rooker. And so Mr. Rooker one time was around another man and there was somebody speaking in tongues. And the, the man that was with R Mr. Rooker said, who's he talking to? Or what's he saying? Or what's he saying? And so Mr. Rooker responded, I don't know. He's not talking to me. <laughs> right? Well, he, he didn't know really how biblical he was. The Bible says that he who speaks in a tongue is not speaking to men. He's speaking to God. And what is he speaking? Divine secrets, mysteries, intimacies between you and your heavenly father. So one of the main benefits of speaking in tongues is direct communication with your heavenly father where you're praying and speaking mysteries and intimacies between you and your heavenly father. Number two, speaking in tongues is a method of spiritual edification. Speaking in tongues is a way that we can edify ourselves. We can build ourselves up. Uh, you're in 1 Corinthians 14. Let's read verse 4. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 4. It says, For he who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. Edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. <clears throat> Notice, <clears throat> this verse says, He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. <clears throat> Again, what's the benefit of speaking in other tongues? You edify yourself. Now, <clears throat> what does edify mean? <clears throat> I want to read this to you from a couple of other translations, the Amplified Translation. Now, these passages will tell you, he who speaks in a tongue, on the tongue, is giving you the definition of what edify means, right? And so it says, he who speaks in an unknown tongue, Amplified says, edifies and improves himself. He edifies and improves himself. One of the main reasons you need to speak in tongues is you need improvement, Right. If you're, you know, gathering with us this morning and somebody's with you, you can tell them, hey, you need to pray in tongues because you need improvement. Right. Well, we all need improvement is the reality. But notice what it says. If you speak in tongues, you edify and improve yourself. Right. 
Uh, <clears throat> then also the new revised standard says you build yourself up. You build up yourselves, right? <clears throat> the New Living Translation says a person <clears throat> who speaks in tongues is strengthened personally in the Lord. <clears throat> Notice what we said. A person who prays in tongues is strengthened personally in the Lord. And then uh, God's Word translation says, he helps himself grow. He helps himself grow. And then <clears throat> one of my favorites is a passion translation. It says, the one who speaks in tongues advances his own spiritual progress. You, when you speak in tongues, you're advancing your own spiritual progress. Do you want to grow in the things of God? Pray in the Spirit. Do you want to progress in the things of God? Pray in tongues. That's what the Bible tells us to do. Amen. And notice it says you advance your own spiritual progress, right? So sometimes we're saying, hey, I need somebody to teach me. Hey, I, and yes, we need good teaching. Yes, we need to be in church. Yes, we need to be doing those things. But at the end of the day, you are responsible to be in the Word of God. You are responsible to pray in the Spirit. You are responsible to pray, right? And those things are going to contribute towards your spiritual growth and improvement and edification. Amen. Now, it says, he who speaks in an unknown tongue, we read, edifies himself. So what does edify mean? <clears throat> well, the easiest illustration I can think of is a cell phone, right? All of us have, most of us have cell phones. Uh, <clears throat> Pastor Samantha and I have some people we dearly love and they have some of the older phones, right? And so we, we, so we tease them and say, you have a dumb phone, not a smartphone, right? Well, it doesn't matter what kind of phone you have that has a limited battery and that battery will drain. It will, it will, be, it will become depleted, right? And it has to be charged up. Well, that's what edifying does. Praying in tongues charges us up and builds us up, right, in our most holy faith. Now I'm going to reveal my age just a little bit, but I had, back in the day, back in the day, I had a Walkman radio, right, with a cassette. That lets you know how old it is. And so you put batteries in there, and it wasn't wireless. You didn't see them little white things in my ears. It was wired. You saw the wires running up to the headphones, right? And it was a, you know, wire going across and holding them headphones on. And I see, I know some of y'all saying, yep, yep, I know what you're talking about. Well, when you would play those cassette tapes, you know, the sermons would go in, in real time. But when the battery started to become depleted, what happened? It would begin to drag. So it would sound like this. The word of God tells you to pray in the spirit. <laughs> And what does that mean? There's nothing wrong with the tape. The batteries were becoming depleted. The batteries were being trained. There wasn't enough charge to fully make the, the, the Walkman work like it should, right? Well, guess what? <clears throat> Even though we're not electronic equipment, we get drained in this life. We get depleted and we need to charge. We need to hook into the power of God so we can be charged by the Spirit of God, so we can maintain the glow by the Spirit of God. Amen? And praying in tongues is a way that we can charge ourselves, we can edify ourselves, and we can build ourselves up. Amen? All right. <clears throat> Number three, let's go to Jude 20. Jude 20. Now, there's one chapter in the book of Jude, and it's right before the book of Revelation. But in Jude 20, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> we're going to read, and it says, But you, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Let me read that to you again. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, right? The message translation says it this way, but you, dear friends, carefully build yourselves up on your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Spirit. You know, one of the things, another thing that, that speaking in tongues will do for us, it says in this verse, it, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, right? So praying in tongues is a way to stimulate your faith, right? Um, it helps us to learn to trust God more fully. You know, you have to exercise faith to speak in tongues, right? You know, sometimes when people are filled with the Spirit, they don't speak in tongues to, when somebody prays for them because they think the Spirit of God is going to make them speak. The Holy Spirit is not going to make you speak, right? If you speak in tongues, you're going to be speaking in tongues. The Spirit of God will give you utterance of the ability to speak in other tongues, but you have to speak out what the Spirit of God has given you in cooperation with the Spirit of God. 
right? <clears throat> and so <clears throat> you have to exercise faith to do that, right? And so <clears throat> to, ex to, to speak in tongues, I exercise faith, right? And so exercising faith in one area helps me to understand how to exercise faith in other areas. So speaking in tongues, building ourselves up on our most holy faith is a way that we can progress in faith in the things of God. And notice it says building yourself up. So who's responsible for building you up, right? Notice he said building yourself up. You need to build yourself up. The Spirit of God is not responsible to build you up. You're responsible to build yourself up. And how do you do that? By praying in the Spirit. Now, thank God for people that can encourage us. Thank God for the Word of God that can encourage us. Thank God for messages that can help us grow. But, hey, we can pray in the Spirit. We can grow in uh, We can grow in our faith. Our faith can be stimulated by praying in the Spirit. Amen. Number four. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians 14. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians 14. And we're going to read verses 14 through 17. 1 Corinthians 14, verses 14 through 17. Number four, praying in tongues is an excellent method of giving thanks. It's a way that we can praise God. It's a way that we can thank God, right? 1 Corinthians 14, verse 14 through 17 says this, For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays. Again, notice how much the Bible says about praying in tongues. Um, and if you didn't know what the Bible says, don't don't feel discouraged. <laughs> I didn't. That was the time of my life. I didn't know what it said, right? But thank God for being having revelation from the Spirit of God to understand what God's Word says. But He says, "For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful." <clears throat> what is the conclusion then? <clears throat> <clears throat> I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with the understanding. What's he saying? I'm going to pray in tongues and I'm going to pray in my natural native language, right? I will sing with the spirit and I will sing with the understanding also. Otherwise, if you bless with the spirit, what's he talking about praying in tongues? Otherwise, if you bless with the spirit, how will he who occupies the place of the uninformed say amen? Notice this, at your giving of thanks, at your giving of thanks since he does not understand what you're saying. For indeed, you give thanks well, but the other is not edified. And then Paul said, I thank my God, I speak in tongues more than you all, right? <clears throat> so when you look at this portion of scripture, notice what Paul says in connection with speaking in other tongues. He says, when you bless with the spirit, what's he talking about? When you give thanks to God, you're praying in tongues, but it's a way that you're blessing God in the spirit. And then it says, for verily you give thanks well. So in other words, Praying in tongues is a way that we can give thanks and praise and adoration to our Heavenly Father. Now, I think a good way to illustrate this is, um, you know, there, there are times, you know, like I, I, I so am so thankful for my wife, Pastor Samantha. And there's other individuals that God has strategically placed in my life that have been a huge benefit and blessing to me. And, you know, you thank those individuals, you do things for, for those individuals. But, you know, sometimes when you express thanks, you know, you're like, hey, I really appreciate you. Sometimes you feel at a loss because you can't communicate, you can't articulate uh, verbally the depth of feelings that you have for that person, right? The depth of gratitude that you have. You just feel like my words can't express how I feel, right? Well, what God is saying to us is praying in tongues is a way that we can adequately express our gratitude to our Heavenly Father. Verily, you can give thanks well, right? From your heart, you can give thanks to God through praying in the Spirit. I like the New Living Translation. It says this, uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 16 through 17. It says, for if you praise God only in the Spirit, how can those who don't understand you praise God along with you? So what he's addressing here is that people can pray in tongues and they can give thanks to God. But if people are, are don't understand what's going on or don't have never heard about being filled with the Spirit, then they can't give thanks either. So in other, in other words, if I said praise the Lord, then people can say praise the Lord. But if I pray in tongues, they don't know what I'm saying, right? So even though I'm giving thanks well, they don't understand, right? But then he goes on, for if you praise God only in the spirit, how can those who don't understand praise God along with you? How can they join in you in giving thanks when they don't understand what you're saying? 
Notice what he says. You will be giving thanks very well. You will be giving thanks very well, right? What was he saying? When you pray in the spirit, it's a way that you can give thanks to God, right? Now, number five, <clears throat> this one's found in the book of Isaiah chapter 28. Now, I trust that these things are just building you up and edifying you this morning so you can see the value of speaking in other tongues and make it an important part of your devotional life. Amen. That's what God truly desires for us. In Acts 28, Acts 28, and we're going to read verses 11 and 12. Acts 28, verses 11 and 12. It says, For with stammering lips and another tongue, he will speak to this people. He was speaking prophetically about tongues in, in, into the New Testament era. And he says, To whom he said, This is the rest with which he may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing. Notice what God said about tongues. It is the rest and it is the refreshing, right? It is a rest and it is the refreshing. So praying in tongues is a way that we can, we said it's a way that we can build ourselves up. It's a way that we can edify ourselves. It's a way can, we can stay refreshed, right? <clears throat> and I think of it like this. Have you ever had a hard day's work or maybe you did a lot of manual labor or did a lot of things around the house and, and man, you were exhausted and you lay down and you went to sleep and in the morning you just felt refreshed. You were exhausted when you went to bed, but you were refreshed in the morning, right? Uh, well, praying in tongues can refresh us. It can strengthen us, right? And sometimes a doctor, if you go to the doctor, they'll say, well, you, you know, how are you sleeping? You just need some adequate rest. Matter of fact, I was reading a health book one time and he had the, I believe it was Dr. Colbert on the seven pillars of health, but one of those was adequate rest, adequate rest, right? Well, praise the Lord, we can get rest and refreshing when we pray in the spirit. And I'm not saying, hey, we don't need to sleep. We need to sleep, right? <clears throat> but what I'm saying to you is that <clears throat> we need rest for our physical, natural body. We need praying in, in the spirit to strengthen ourselves and refresh ourselves also. Amen. Speaking in tongues is a way that we can stay refreshed. We can stay revitalized. We can stay re-energized, recharged, and rejuvenated. Amen. Now, number six, and the final one I want to share with you this morning Speaking or praying in tongues is a way to help you pray according to the will of God. <clears throat> Speaking in tongues is a way that we can pray according to the will of God. Now, <clears throat> let's go to Romans chapter 8. <clears throat> Romans chapter 8. And I don't know about you, but there's been times in my life when I didn't know. I knew I needed to pray for something. There can be two situations. One, there's things that need to be prayed for, but I didn't even know it, right? And then there's things that need to be prayed for that I don't know exactly how to pray for that, right? I think we've all been in those situations. Maybe there's things that were coming. We didn't realize were coming. They needed prayer. Maybe family members were going through situations, friends, church members, coworkers were going through situations, our kid, our, our, our spouse, our friends, whoever might be were going through situations we were unaware. The Spirit of God knows, but we don't know, but we could pray about that. Then there's situations that come up in life and we don't know exactly how to pray for that. But thank God we have the Spirit of God. Notice what the Bible says. And praying in tongues is a way that we can direct our praying in those areas and we can be led in our praying. Notice what the Bible says in Romans 8 and verse 26. <clears throat> the Bible says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we all. So let's break down this verse. He's saying, look, we have some weaknesses. And one of those weaknesses is we don't know exactly how to pray as we should. But don't worry about that because we have the word of God to teach us and we have the spirit of God to help us. Likewise, the spirit also helps in our weaknesses for we don't know how we should pray as we ought. But the spirit himself makes intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. <clears throat> the Spirit of God himself makes intercessions with groanings which cannot be uttered. <clears throat> Amen. And so <clears throat> what is God's word saying? Is God, is God's word is saying, hey, that sometimes we don't know how to pray about things, but the Spirit will help us to pray. And he'll pray and, and he'll pray through us. He'll lead us in our prayer life. Right. And so there's times where you may not know to pray. You need to pray about some, something. But when you're praying, you're praying in the spirit. God can direct you to pray for a situation. 
There's other times where you may be need to pray about something, but you're not sure exactly how to pray for it. There's been any number of times when I've done that. I've prayed as far as I need know how to pray in English. And then I'll say, hey, Father, I thank you that I can pray in the Spirit and you help me pray. <clears throat> and I trust the Spirit of God <clears throat> to pray through me about this situation right now. <clears throat> and then I'll just begin praying in the Spirit about that, right? <clears throat> the Holy Spirit knows how to pray. <clears throat> he knows what we need to pray for, and he can help us in our praying. Uh, <clears throat> one of my friends is Pastor Roger Abergel from uh, the church in Los Angeles, California, more specifically Van Nuys, uh, California. But I remember one time I was listening to him teach on the subject of prayer, and he said, I'm going to teach you on how to pray the perfect prayer, right? But when he said that, he got everybody's attention because everyone was, I, I want to know how to pray the perfect prayer. What is the perfect prayer? Well, <clears throat> what he was talking about is praying in tongues, praying in the Spirit, because the Spirit of God is directing your praying. The Spirit of God can show you how to pray sometimes when mentally you don't know exactly how to pray for that situation, right? <clears throat> and that's why this can be the perfect prayer. So the Holy Spirit is directing our prayers. We can pray according to the will of God, and that's the perfect prayer, right? Because it's Spirit-directed. It's Spirit-guided. Well, another thing, when I'm praying... In English, I'm praying for things I know, things I want. And so there can be an element of selfishness, but praying in the Spirit eliminates selfishness from my prayer life, right? <clears throat> because I'm praying directed by the Spirit of God. I can be selfish, but the Spirit of God is not selfish, right? And so it eliminates selfishness from my prayer life. And that's not to say, yes, we need to pray for things. We need to pray for things in our life. But sometimes, you know, we may not realize that we're praying selfishly. Uh, what do I mean by that? Yes, we need to pray for our things in our life, our families, things in our environment, our job, all those types of things. But is that all we're praying about? Are we praying about our leaders? Are we praying about our nation? Are we praying about the lost? Are we praying about our neighbors? Are we praying about our family, right? Those are things that uh, we can do for others, right? And so, but praying in the spirit can help eliminate that selfishness in our life. And we can all have a tendency to do that sometimes. It's kind of like the, the farmer named Don, the farmer named Don and his son named Sam. The farmer named Don and his son named Sam. And the farmer sat down to eat and he said, Lord, bless me and my wife, bless Sam and his wife, bless us four and no more. Right? Well, <clears throat> clearly we don't pray as, as, obviously selfish as that prayer was communicated. But sometimes when we neglect to pray for others or we neglect to pray what the Spirit of God wants to pray, there can be an element of selfishness in our prayers. And again, that's not to say don't pray for yourself. Yes, you need to pray for yourself, right? <clears throat> but others need prayer as well, right? And so praying in tongues <clears throat> is a huge benefit in the life of the believer. Number one, it helps us connect with our Heavenly Father. We can pray out mysteries. It's a way of building ourselves up. It's a way of charging ourselves. It's a way of ref being refreshed. It's a way of eliminating selfishness in our life. It's a way that we can give thanks to God. It's a way that the Spirit of God can teach us how to pray and show us how to pray for certain situations. It's a way that the Spirit of God can work through us to pray for situations that we're not even aware of, right? So praying in the Spirit is a huge benefit and blessing in our life. And I want to encourage you. We want to encourage you this morning. Take time to pray in the Spirit. Integrate that into your devotional life. Uh, just as we praise God, thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, your goodness, your mercy, your grace. Let's pray in the Spirit as well, right? Let's integrate that into our life because it is a huge blessing that God has given to the body of Christ. And God wants us all filled with the Spirit and speaking with other tongues. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and praise you, Lord, for the privilege that we have to know you, to love you. Thank you for the privilege we have to be filled with the Spirit and speak in other tongues. And Father, I pray for each and every one today. I pray, Lord, that we're stirred to spend time praying in the Spirit. I thank you, Father, for all the benefits that you've provided. Thank you, for first and foremost, for connecting with you, for praying out mysteries, for becoming closer to you. And we thank you, Lord, that it's a method where we can build ourselves up and we can be used by you to pray for situations. Thank you for helping us, giving us the Holy Spirit.
Thank you for praying in other tongues so that we can know exactly how to pray for situations and that you can pray through us by the Spirit of God. Father, we thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, <clears throat> you may be gathering with us this morning and you're not sure about your relationship with Jesus Christ. The good news is the Bible tells us in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Everlasting life has been provided to you and for you through the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And how do we know if we have a relationship with God? How do we know we have everlasting life? Well, how do we become a Christian? How do we, how do we have a relationship with God? The Bible tells us in Romans 10, 9, and 10 that if we believe in our heart that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead and we confess him with our mouth as our Lord and Savior, that we are saved. Now, sometimes people say, I, what is that all? One time I, I prayed with a man and he said, is that all there is to it? I said, well, no, that's the beginning. Now God wants you to become like him and get to know him better every day. But he, he couldn't kind of comprehend the fact that it was so easy to have a relationship with God. Well, <clears throat> the reason God made it easy is because he didn't want anybody to miss a relationship. He doesn't want anybody to go to hell. He doesn't want anybody to miss heaven. He wants everybody to come to repentance and have a relationship with him. And so he made it easy. And then after that, we begin a life of following him. We become disciples, our followers of Christ, where we get into his word, find out his will, apply it to our life. That's God's will. If you're not sure about your relationship with Jesus this morning, or you would like to rededicate your life, I'm going to pray a prayer, and then I want you to repeat it after me. I'm going to go slow so you can pray with me, but pray it from your heart. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I believe that you raised Jesus Christ from the dead. And I confess him now as my Lord and Savior. And I commit this day to love you, to serve you, to be a disciple, and to follow you. And I thank you, Lord, that I'm saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer, we want you to know that we're so excited. The Bible says the angels of heaven are rejoicing. I want to ask you to go to our website. Our website is at AbundantChurch.org. That's A-B-U-N-D-A-N-T-C-H-U-R-C-H.org. Uh, there's a contact button. You can click that contact button and send us an email. Let us know, hey, I received Christ. Hey, I rededicated my life. We want to rejoice with you. Also, it's investment time into the kingdom of God. You know what? I'm Pastor Samantha, and I want to say thank you for partnering with us uh, to share the Word of God, to get the Word of God out, and to uh, send and support missions all around the world. You know, our church, thankfully, in our ministry, we support others that are doing the work of God throughout the world. And so one of the great things about sharing things online is we're able to share it with you know, people all over the world, and you have a part in that right? And so the Bible tells us in Malachi 3 to bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there may be provision in the house of God. So what is the tithe? The tithe is 10% of your income, right? 10% of your increase. And sometimes people say, well, you know, how much is the tithe? Well, it's 10%. How do you know it's 10%? In other words, you can't tithe 5%. You can't tithe 3%, right? The tithe is 10%. How do you know the tithe is 10%? Well, the Hebrew word for tithe means 10%. The Greek word for tithe means 10%. If you're still unconvinced, guess what? Webster's Dictionary defines the tithe as 10%. So the tithe is 10%. Well, what's an offering? An offering is anything that you give beyond or above the 10%, right? And so the Bible says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there may be provision in the house of God. And then anything that you give beyond that is an offering, right? And God will open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings in your life. Amen. There's different ways that you can give. You can give probably the easiest way is by going to our website. Our website is AbundantChurch.org. That's A-B-U-N-D-A-N-T-C-H-U-R-C-H.org. AbundantChurch.org. There's a give icon. You can click that give icon and it's real safe, simple, and easy to, to use. You can give a one-time contribution there, sow your seed there. You can also set up recurring 
uh, uh, donations there as well and investments into the kingdom of God. Uh, but however you give, thank you for your faithful and consistent giving to lead, to help us lead people to a committed relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for partnering with us. Let me pray for you right now. Father, we thank you and praise you for each and every one given today. We thank you that we can worship you and we can honor you by giving our tithes and offerings. And Father, I thank you for each and every one given today. I thank you, Lord, that you have stirred the hearts of those who are giving. I thank you, Lord, for their obedience to you, their faithfulness to you. I thank you, Lord, as they give today, they're honoring you and pleasing you. And Father, I thank you, Lord, that as they tithe, you open the windows of heaven as they plant their seeds and sow their offerings. I thank you that you cause abundant provision to come into their lives. Thank you for blessing their lives, their jobs, their businesses, their investments. Thank you for blessing everything that their hand touches. And Father, we thank you for blessing us and making us a blessing. Thank you, Lord, that you empower us to prosper so that we can advance the kingdom of God and be a blessing. And Father, we thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Thank you for being our source. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, finally, Pastor Samantha, I want you to know that we love you. We count it an honor every time we get to share the word of God with you. And until we're able to do that again, please know we love you. We're praying for you. And God bless you.